Hey guys, in this episode, we're going to be looking at the Tola Shani. This is what they made the red dye out of in ancient Israel for the priest garments, for the red sashes, for the Levite priests, uh, for the red yarn, the scarlet yarn for the scapegoat. Because what it means is, is scarlet uh, worm, or you know, in our translations in the English, it's like a worm, but it's tola in the Hebrew, and tola shani means the scarlet or the crimson worm. So, <laughs> so they're getting ready to build the temple in Jerusalem, right? So they've gotten a, the Temple Institute's gotten all this stuff ready. You know, they got the gold menorah, they've got all these different things that are ready to build this temple. But they've also looked into this Tola Shani, which gives us the red dye for the tapestry inside of the temple, for the curtain, the veil, right? And for the priestly garments and the high priest garments, too, and all these different things. So we're going to look at that right now, you guys. This is the Hebrew. Uh, it's Tola, right? Here's the Hebrew. Tola Shani, or it's the the Cocos or the Kermes Elicus, if you're speaking in English, like the Western countries might call it that. So here is what it does. This is the this is a stone bowl, and you can see it looks almost like dark red wine. These are the little tolas right here. They're more like a grub than a worm. And um and that's what we see here. And they've collected a bunch of these in Israel not too long ago. For the Temple Institute, they're training these young people, these young men and women, and what these what these Torah Shani were used for in the Torah, right? What what God instructed Moses to use these for. So that's what we're looking at, and uh, it's pretty cool stuff. So here's about what they are when they're dry. They're a little bit bigger than this, uh, about the size of a pea. Uh, seven millimeters when they're ready to give birth, when they're, you know, real mature up on a tree is where they find them on these oak trees. So this is uh, what they, when you dry them, that's how they made the powder to make the dye. They would dry these out in the sun, then they would crush them. We're going to show a demonstration of that. You're going to see a demonstration at the end of this episode, you guys. You don't want to miss it. I'm going to actually have a video where I had my own that I purchased and I crushed them and made a red dye and put the yarn inside of it. So you won't want to miss this. You're going to see it right now, uh, just in a few. So here we go. Here's another image I took of the uh, tola on a white piece of paper. And you could see that it was turning the white piece of paper this crimson red color. Okay. Here's the, the red yarn that went into the, uh, the, this is the video I made, one of the videos actually, and you could see the scarlet yarn. I would imagine that Rahab, right, back when Joshua came in and, and all of Israel came into the promised land, I would imagine that Rahab made her scarlet rope with that. Remember, she was spared from the judgment uh, because she had the scarlet rope hanging down from her window, and her and her family were spared as Joshua, Yeshua, right, went in to destroy the city. So here in this video, you're seeing that little tola, and you're seeing the, the scarlet yarn there, and you can, you know it's been used a lot in the times of Moses, but they're using it today. It's pretty cool stuff. I love this. <laughs> I love seeing history played out in real life. Okay. So the next one, here is a photo of uh, some young men here, and there's a woman there showing them how to make this red dye, and they're harvesting right here from these Kermes oak trees and these trees in Israel, and they collected a bunch of them. You could see some right here, and uh, it's really cool stuff that they're learning this today, is it not? Here's a close-up of what one of them looks like up on a tree, and it's fully mature. It gets that dark red crimson color, and it's about to give birth to its offspring. So the Roman world called it grani cucum, or the grain of the scarlet yarn. And this was very valuable in the uh, Middle Ages, I believe it was. They wanted these, they called it grain, or, or you know, little grain, little little grains, you know, because they, they, they look like that when you crush them. That's what it looks like. And it's interesting because we know that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Wow, pretty interesting stuff. All right, let's continue. Here's how they crush them today. You make this red dye, right? Here's where they use it. This is funny, you guys. If you go to Starbucks, they make their red drinks and I think they're some of their red treats there out of the dye from these because it's the organic uh, red dye. I'm gonna show you the big picture of it. This is the organic red dye. Um, and it's it's what they make the food coloring out of too. So, so you've probably had some, and you don't even know it. You've you've had a little bit of tola, 
in one of these drinks at one time or another. So <laughs> funny stuff. So here's a picture of what the Temple Institute is doing. So they they take the, here's the red yarn right there mixed in with the gold. Remember, that's in the Torah. God gave specific instructions to Moses and the children of Israel on how to do this. And this is part of what they made for the tapestry and for the ephod, for the high priest, and for the massive veil of the temple later, right? And the, and the curtain of the tabernacle as well. So I got one more video that you don't want to miss, you guys. This, this, this last video is really detailed. It's going to show the crushing of this tola and the color changing. You, you don't want to miss this. So here's the tabernacle, right? It had uh, this tapestry over that was beautiful. You could see from the inside that the red in there is from that tola. And then there was the white sheepskin, and then there was the goat skin, which is kind of weird because that's an unclean animal, but the goat skin, but it was dyed red, God said, to use the tola to dye it crimson red, which speaks of the blood of the lamb, right, that was sprinkled on the, on the mercy seat, that solid gold empty seat. And that was to, to for, for the forgiveness, the covering of sins, right? Pretty cool stuff that we see in the Old Testament, you guys. Here's the Moses, and this is an image of Moses blessing Aaron, Aaron being the high priest, wearing the high priest's garments, right? He, he's wearing the ephod, and here you can see the, the breastplate with the 12 precious stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. So the red in here, the crimson red, came from the Tola. So, so cool, you guys. So I'm going to look at, let's check out Psalm 22, verse 6, right? Psalm 22, verse 6, written by David over 1,000 years before the birth of Christ. And it says here, but I am a worm and not a man. That word worm is tola or tola shini, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. 1,000 years before the birth of Christ, David wrote this, this psalm. Pretty Crazy stuff, right? So now you're going to see the video. I'm going to show you the video of it. And by the way, I wrote a book on this too, but you can check out, get it on Amazon or wherever. But you want to watch this video, and I'm going to put the full screen on for you. So here are the dried pieces, the dried little uh, tolas, right? And this is how they did it in ancient Israel. And they would, they would dry them in the sun. They would collect a bunch of them, dry them in the sun, and they would put them in maybe a, a, a bowl like this one, this white stone bowl that I have here. And then we're gonna, you're going to see in the video that um, I went ahead and crushed all of these. And you could see it turn red as you crush it. It's really cool stuff. So here we go. Crushing it now. You could even hear it crunch when I was doing it. It was like... And then you could see in a, here in a second, you're going to see it turning crimson red. All right, here we go. You'll see it. I'm going to angle it so that you can actually see this. Pretty cool, isn't it? Not, I mean, amazing how this is in the Bible, in the Torah. God put that in there all that long ago. And then David, in Psalm 22, verse 6, was inspired by God to write that. Look at the red. Check out the red now. See that? Look at that. Crimson red. It's like a fine powder now. Now watch this. Watch how dark red it turns, how quickly it happens, too. You don't want to miss this. <laughs> okay. By the way, my wife's going to kill me because I was spilling this stuff everywhere. Oh! <laughs> but look at the color, you guys. It looks like almost like a, a dark red wine, right? Amazing. Amazing, amazing. And what they would use is they would use a boiling hot water and then add the tola to that and mix it. And then they could put the, the for the scapegoat, or for Yom Kippur, right? The, the, the red yarn that was tied around the scapegoat. And that's what, how they would get this thing dyed. And perhaps, like we talked about Rahab, right? Rahab, who's in the line of Judah, which the Bible records, goes all the way down to David, Ruth, Boaz, David, and then all the way down to Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. Amazing. So here we see the scarlet yarn, right? Here I, I got a limb with uh, what it would look like. They're, they get on a limb like this and they could stick themselves to the piece of wood just before giving birth to many, many offspring. 
Which brings us to Psalm 22, verse 6. I, Jesus, shouted out the beginning of the psalm when he was on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did Jesus shout that out from the cross? Because I believe he was bringing everybody there, including the guys who knew how to make the die for the temple, and the priests and all those people, the Pharisees, the scribes, he was bringing everybody there to Psalm 22. And we know if, if you knew Psalm 22, which most of them did, you would know that it says, I am a Tola and no man. Why did he say that? Because the Tola climbs up a tree one time in its life to give birth, new life to its offspring. And how does this happen? So it climbs up a tree, it sticks itself to the tree. It literally sticks itself to the tree and and it swells up and gets that crimson red color and then it bursts open when it dies. When Jesus died, remember he was already dead, but a Roman soldier pierced his side in fulfillment of the scriptures in Zechariah. And he, he pierced his side and it says that water mixed with blood shot out. Whoa. And then there was a big, there was a massive earthquake where rocks split open. So what happened after that? So then that was a picture of, I believe, of Jesus having, dying of a broken heart, you guys. Because when you have a heart attack, there's this water that goes around the heart and it was pierced and water with blood mixed out, shot out. And before that, remember, Right after the three hours of darkness, three hours of darkness, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Bringing everyone to Psalm 22, which is called the dawn or the like the dawn of a new day. So suddenly it was light. Remember, it was, there was three hours of darkness right before he cried that out. He cried that out and there was light. And then... He's shining light right then and there. As a rabbi did in those days, there was no chapter numbers or verse numbers back then. He was bringing everybody there to Psalm 22. And if you knew verse 6 and you knew about this little Tola Shani, you would know that that little creature climbs up a tree one time in its life to give birth to its offspring. And it would burst open and literally die that, that spot on the wood. Crimson red stain would be on that that piece of wood as the, the the new life to the young ones goes, they go off and they're dyed with that same color as well from that, that parent Tola. Wow. But get, guess what else happens? After three days, you guys, three days, that little spot that's crimson red on the tree turns as white as snow, like a flaky white substance, and it falls to the ground like a snowflake or like the, the bread of heaven, the manna right? It falls to the ground. And that brings us to Isaiah 118, where it says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, right? Shani, they shall be as white as snow. And it says, though they be as crimson, which is Tola, they shall be like wool, like lamb's wool, white as snow, right? In other words, your sins will be clean, forgiven, wiped away, washed clean. Because the Bible also says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, all of it. This was the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus was called the Lamb of God. And it was only by his precious blood that you can be saved. It was because of what he did on that cross, on that wood, on that tree, and by his precious blood, by the power of his blood, that you, my friend, can be saved and that I'm saved. And if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, and if you would like to do that right now, Yeshua Mashiach, if you're in Israel, if you'd like to give your life to him, be born again and become a child of God, guaranteed to go to heaven If this speaks to your heart right now, you can say this prayer right after me. You could repeat this prayer after me from your heart to God and receive him. This can happen right now, right where you're at. This could be the greatest moment of your life, my friend. If you'd like to do that, repeat this prayer after me. Are you ready? All right. You're praying to God. 
Repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I am sorry for my sin, Lord. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe that you died on the cross, Jesus. I believe you shed your blood for me. I also believe that in three days you were raised from the dead and that you are alive today. Please help me to follow you. I choose to follow you as my Lord and as my Savior from this day forward. Please fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, my friend, if you prayed that prayer, you are now a child of God. You're in His grip. He will hold you. Even if you go through hard times, He's going to hold you in His grip until He takes you right to heaven someday. All right? Well, God bless you. And hey, by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to consider subscribing because we, we go through all these different books of the Old Testament finding Jesus in stories like Joseph. Remember, Joseph was sold for silver. His brothers despised and rejected him, sold for silver. Later, he was falsely accused. He was put in that place of the condemned, down in that place of the condemned. Two there. Remember, Jesus was crucified with two on both sides. One was cursed. One was given life, restored to the king. And then later he was brought before, raised up out of that place of condemn, brought before the throne, and only he was found worthy to reveal God's plan through Pharaoh's dreams. Jesus was the only one found worthy in the book of Revelation to take the scroll out of the right hand of he who sat on the throne and to break its seals and open it up. And that's future, guys. So I'm doing a a series in Revelation right now. You might want to check that out as well. And uh, also... If you want to uh, check out some of the books I've got, um, this is the book right here, Tola Shani. And um, this is actually, you can get it in hardback too. It's kind of a, it's a smaller book, but uh, I think you'll like it. And, um, you know, there's colored pictures in here, uh, all kinds of really cool stuff. So you can get it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, Apple iBooks. If you want to get a cheaper version, you can get it like a electronic version, all that kind of stuff. So God bless you guys. And hey, if you did pray that prayer to receive Jesus into your heart, to become born again, hey, feel free to email me or you can also um, comment down below and I'd love to pray for you. All right, my friend, God bless you.